trailer is I still have problems with it well I may have problems with this it's director I just don't trust Brian Singer I just do not trust him the first X-Men movie a lot of people loved it and now it doesn't hold up I felt at the time of release the movie wasn't as good that's just my personal opinion I actually did feel like it was a good X-Men movie but it wasn't a great X-Men movie it could have been so much better I felt Okay, we got an X-Men movie. We never thought we'd ever get an X-Men movie in at, at that time, but it wasn't enough. You know, I felt I felt it lacked a lot, and he made up with X2. And I feel X2 is such a good movie. A lot of people hold on to it possibly being one of the best X-Men movies because X-Men 1 was so mediocre. That's how I feel. So, um, he did X-Men. He did X-Men 2. Of course, we know he stepped away for a while. It, did, it fucked up another franchise. And then, um, now he's back. He's back doing Days of Future Past. And I feel like we've progressed past what he's doing. we progressed past the black suits, they, which he brought back in the trailer. I noticed that. Because he put zero effort into any kind of research on X-Men. I, I know for a fact he did watch the cartoon. He mentioned that as being, you know, his drive to actually do the first movie. But he, he doesn't. He just did not care about the franchise. I truly feel Brian Singer does not give a shit about X-Men. He doesn't. And I feel the only reason he stepped up this time with the new trailer, as you can see, with some of the things he's done in the movie, was because of the last movie. So basically, I, I feel other directors that came in did a pretty decent job. You know, we ended up getting, you know, First Class, which is a pretty good movie. I think it's probably the best X-Men movie. We got we got the Wolverine, not X-Men Origins Wolverine, but we got the Wolverine, which is pretty cool. There was another director doing something totally different with the character and making it work. A lot of people didn't like the fact that it didn't have as much action, but it showed he could actually build up a character. So, other directors are taking on the X-Men franchise. Some of them kind of failed, or at least they tried different things, but Brian Singer, just, I don't feel he cares. I truly don't feel he cared. And I'm just, another thing that's funny about the trailer is um if you look at the when you look at the credits they give him it says for the director of x-men which they have to say that because it's x-men film he directed the first movie and of course you want to throw out the fact hey we got the first director to do this movie as well so it's going to be more on par with what he's done before so they throw out, they throw out that for the director of x-men but but the next thing they throw out and the usual suspects. Now the thing about that that makes me laugh is they throw out X-Men to link it to the franchise because that's what he's doing currently. And then they throw out a movie he did in fucking 1995. Which means he's, he's done current movies. But those movies have been so bad they reference a fucking movie from the 90's. <laughs> really? Really? And this is what they're, they're passing this franchise off to him again. Seriously, they're ashamed to mention anything he's done in the 2000s, yet they give him this franchise. And that's just ridiculous. And I think about the trailer that I actually liked, I kind of realized, I kind of made fun of a little with some of my friends, is you notice the song in the background and the way it's set up is very similar to Man of Steel, or as you may know it, the Superman movie that Zack, that Zack Snyder directed and Brian Singer did not direct. And we all know how that movie turned out, right? The one that he directed. And we all know how the Zack Snyder movie turned out. Now, the Zack Snyder movie had the same premise of showing emotion and being very closed off and dramatic. And then we actually see the movie compared to the trailer, which was more focused on emotion. You saw it was more based on action because he just leveled fucking cities in that movie. He just shit it just destroyed metropolis fuck i mean the amount of damage in that fucking movie is ridiculous so um i'm assuming that x-men may have the same thing going on i feel like they went for emotion with this trailer to sell the emotion but i also feel that when you finally see the finished product it's going to be basically a, just an action movie action oriented i i 
I wanted to be as good as first class. I really wanted to be as good as first class. But the black suits again, that shit's in it again. Now, I don't know if anyone from first class wears their first class outfits because they didn't show any of that in the trailer. At least I didn't see that. But as far as the future goes, the future, we just lost colors, basically. Everything's back to black. And um, it just feels generic at certain points. You know, I feel like there's there, there are actors who are carrying this movie. I feel he has a great cast, and I feel he's going to just basically ruin it. Especially, if, even the Sentinels, for example. Part 3 actually showed the Sentinel for a brief moment. It was just a fucking hologram, you know, in a danger room. But that was fine. You know, we, we saw a Sentinel head. We didn't see a full body. We saw outline of a full body. But we saw a fucking head. And nerves, we lost our shit after just seeing that. And that was fine for us. Now I'm seeing pictures of the Sentinels. And they just, like, like why? Why change it? It's, I mean, concept art. They do concept art for movies. When they have artwork already done, why not just copy that and add on to it and change it a little? Why make it your own? Just, just fucking do it. Just fucking take what's already there that's already designed for you and just fucking do it. I don't understand why he has to change everything. Maybe it's not his fault. Maybe it isn't. But I feel as a director, he needs to put a little bit more into his fucking movies he make. A little bit more input as a director. I also feel like, as a lot of people say, they love Brian Singer. They're happy he's back. But I feel he's solely responsible for the gambit we got in X Men Origins Wolverine, because as a lot of fans complain about Gambit not being in the original movies, the first first three movies, it was Brian Singer who did not want Gambit in the first three movies. In fact, the studio was trying to put Gambit in the movies. He kept shooting it down. He did not want Gambit in the movie because he didn't want to start some kind of love triangle or whatever the fuck he was trying to do. He, he wanted the main focus to be Wolverine is the macho character of the group. He's the main person. He didn't want another person taken away from that or like a dick measuring contest between Gambit and Wolverine. So, he left Gambit out of the film franchise intentionally, not because of fans, because fans wanted Gambit, but because he didn't give a shit about X-Men. I just feel that way. I feel he totally does not give a shit about the franchise. And it's just a payday for him. It really is. He may care a little. These are characters he helped bring to life. This is the world he helped bring to life. But people have done it better than him. They have. It's proven. They've done it better than him. So we don't need him. We don't. I don't know why Fox keeps running back to him, but we do not need Brian Singer. And it's just my personal hate for him, and I know a lot of fanboys will probably thumb this video down, or even not even pay any fucking mind at, at all, but um, I don't give a shit what you feel about him, with, what he did with X-Men 2, the whole thing is, if it wasn't for him starting off X-Men in such a mediocre way, we wouldn't have had this slope of just bullshit X-Men movies until we got to first class. It's, that's just the way it is. It would have been a higher standard of movie making all the way up to first class. It would have been. But it was mediocre. And I, oh man, I just, I just don't understand Fat Boys when it comes to Brian Singer. I really don't. I don't understand how, for example, let's compare Superman for a moment. I've already done this on our blog already. But let's compare Superman for a moment. You got Zack Snyder's Superman, which everyone shits on. They feel like if they don't like the movie, they feel that it's Zack Snyder's fault. If they love the movie, they feel it was Christopher Nolan's idea or it was Christopher, Christopher Nolan behind it. It's never Zack Snyder for some reason. People just shit on him, even, even though he gave us possibly the best watch movie we could have gotten. Uh, and um, he just hate for Zack Snyder for some reason. But Brian Singer leaves out characters that he doesn't give a shit about, that he doesn't care what the fans want, and um, basically just does whatever he wants with his characters, and like use Superman in a way that we don't want to see him, because that's the way he wants to see Superman. That's the way he wants to portray Superman. You know, damn doing anything new with the character. Let's just do a clone of what he liked, Richard Donner, which I, I can understand as a fan. You would want to catch her on catch her Richard Donner. But I waited years for being a kid to watch the original Superman movies. Years and years. Waiting for like 
a new Superman movie from Batman versus Superman from the 90s or early 2000s that didn't happen from um, basically the reboot with Superman Lives and the horrible Superman flyby script and all that. I'm waiting for it. Waiting for a new Superman with the new technology we have. I had to settle with Smallville for so long, which you only settle for Smallville for for X amount of time before you eventually quit the show and then come back to it later on down the line in life. And um, I got Superman Returns. Really? That's what you give me? You know what? Fuck you, Brian Singer. <laughs>